morning. Good morning. Hello. Everyone, welcome. Fifth of April. Um, one sec. So this is our APAC EMEA time delivery weekly, and um, do I just verbalize that, Michele? Like, should I just move it into discussions? We can move into discussion if you prefer so, to. I think it's um, uh, worth it's worth saying, right? Okay, so release management coverage for Easter break. Uh, since we have a lot of public holidays on the next Friday, the 7th, and next Monday, the 10th of April, uh, a lot of people are off, uh, especially like release managers. Ruben and Ahmad jumped in to cover the two slots mainly. Uh, with the, We have some limited availability on Monday, just for uh, three, four hours on the afternoon of EMEA but America time zone uh, release management shift is going to be unaffected. Uh, I posted this in engineering FYI and um, add the also to the doc. Thanks for me for the call there. So thank you again for uh, jumping in, Ruben and Ahmad. Agreed. Thanks for, thanks for giving the coverage. Ahmad, uh, you have the next item. Yes, good morning. I wanted to gather some feedback regarding uh, the ClickHouse uh, issue I opened, I think, last week uh, to get some, you know, like some discussions uh, about this. Uh, in summary, it's just like about using ClickHouse to supplement or to aid Prometheus because uh, some, some of the metrics uh, are not accurate like giving like some uh, exact numbers are not like Prometheus way of work. So maybe like using ClickHouse could help with this. So uh, yeah, just wanted to get some opinions about this. ClickHouse would be very useful for things like, uh, like Amy or Michele recently wanted um, things like number of releases per month or, you know, number of something per something. That's very difficult to get in Prometheus from QL. Uh, yeah, ClickHouse would be much better for that. There is a ClickHouse working group that is currently discussing feasibility and uh, other things. So maybe in a couple of quarters, we might have access to a ClickHouse instance. But yeah, that's the major uh, drawback that we don't currently have a ClickHouse instance and it might be some time before we get one. Yeah, and I think that just to add some color on the feasibility stuff, I chatted this through briefly with Michele the other day. Um, they're concerned about the increasing cost for small self-host customers, where it drives up quite a lot. Um, but for our kind of scale, um, it's not as much of a concern, I think. So it should progress in a positive direction, but I think the concerns about how it impacts those smaller self-host customers. I I just wanted to add my two cents. Uh, basically, Scarbeck pointed very good uh, comment in, in this issue that uh, uh, before getting into and building like a, the whole new empire, uh, and changing the gears, uh, I I would love to see. Uh, uh, I would like to get everything from from Prometheus that everything that we we can. And uh, I I do believe that. Well, I'm not against Click Clickhouse. Clickhouse is pretty cool solution. I I really love it. But uh, from the effectiveness point of view. Uh, what I read from 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 this issue, we are trying to solve some tiny bugs, or not tiny bugs, like a, something misdesign, I would say, of our metrics. We are trying to solve misdesign of our metrics by introducing the whole new uh, tech stack, and. Uh, uh, in regards of uh, the issues that you pointed, I, I do believe that we already discussed that. And uh, 
those issues are most likely solvable by not introduce uh, by by getting rid of uh, uh, aggregations over aggregations, and uh, we have all these counters and uh, all these things. Those are aggregations over aggregations. We are, and if we start collecting data per deployment, per job, per release, or whatever, those issues will go will, will go away. I'm pretty sure with that. But uh, I think that again, like this is like a balance between always a balance between effort versus value. I don't think that we we can gain a lot of value from from ClickHouse. However, maybe not on that field because uh, uh, originally ClickHouse is kind of all up database. And it's very good uh, for things like traces. And it's also a push-based model instead of pull-based model. Uh, and uh, I do believe that ClickHouse is not designed for the metrics. It's designed for, for all up data. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I, I have a little concern of uh, implementing like the whole new stack only because uh, because we want to solve certain issues. I would like to see ClickHouse solving actually like bringing the the value that we cannot get with uh, with Prometheus and everything that is related to the metrics, like uh, it's Prometheus specialization. I think we're just doing that wrong. One question. So if we remove this aggregation that you are saying, will we solve this problem that Ahmad is uh, raising? Like what is actually not currently possible? And Ahmed. for you, Ahmad, which kind of, or you, Ruben, I mean, sorry to interrupt you once I would ask question finish. Um, is it, what's the inaccuracy we're having right now on we are, we are currently measuring? Ahmad, uh, you want to talk about the metric that we discussed? Because that metric is not an aggregation. Yeah, like I, the point about the aggregation, to be honest, I, I'm not sure if Prometheus even has something like uh point like like just like something without aggregation because it's an aggregation system after all uh so i'm not entirely sure if actually prometheus is able to determine like exact numbers uh i don't think this is uh how it's designed but like uh, regarding the metrics uh, i think what i'm trying to uh Solved mainly with the click house is, uh, as Ruben mentioned, something uh, like exact numbers about like something like in time, like or from this period of time, how many things are there? Isn't can, that can I great? suggest uh, that? So this actually feels like quite maybe a slightly different um, uh, like initial kind of discussion that needs to happen. So I, from the issue, and um, I know, Michaela, you kind of assigned everyone onto this issue. Like, it sounds like a kind of discussion of like, should we be using ClickHouse or not? But actually, maybe there's a kind of pre-conversation that that is useful for system to take, which is like, like, what is the problem? And try and actually identify, like, is it aggregation or is there something else? And then maybe the rest of us can, can join in more usefully. I think it's also useful actually for orchestration uh, pitches in right now for the simple reason that the way that we implement it is also going to affect what or which, how, which, which kind of metric orchestration later on can have and extract from that. So we will actually, yes, to sit in a solution that gives the value that we want, but we'll be not, not the only users. No, but I metrics. think so. Before we get to the solution, like I don't think we. It doesn't sound like maybe the the problem is like fully. Well, certainly I don't feel like I fully understand the problem. Like, is it a 
is it aggregations or is it the accuracy of uh, of the actual specific data? What we so can the, do is, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Doc, Ruben. I was going to suggest we can open an issue to um, sort of do something with the deployment completed metric. So, you know, in the process of using it or building a dashboard using that metric, maybe we'll figure out some stuff. Maybe uh, we'll figure out what is not possible, what is possible. That, yeah, I think that would that. be helpful. Like if we knew the kind of scopes of like, this is what we we can depend on and and this is the stuff that we definitely won't be able to, then maybe we could uh, we can figure out some useful next steps. One last thing, I was just like, because we started the discussion, I just like encourage everybody like who is like interested to discuss it uh, more in the issue because I like we didn't get like like a lot of discussion uh, from a lot of people. So uh, if anybody's like is interested, just like keep discussing there. Yeah, I sorry, I, I I didn't I didn't comment because uh, all this with all the, all this release management thingy, you don't even have uh, focus time, so you need to focus <laughs> in order to to comment on that. But I again, like I think that we definitely uh, should use cloud ClickHouse, and it's pretty cool. But imagine we we have this very nice, uh, well, nice, okay, not nice, but uh, very rich uh, libraries based on uh, uh, JSONnet, and uh, uh, we have SLOs, uh, uh, and we have like a a lot of metrics kind of framework, which which is already there. And it's based on Prometheus. And now we, we 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 come and say, like, okay, guys, we are using ClickHouse. And then that literally means that we don't have a support from other teams who are actually uh using who 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 built this uh uh framework, and we need to rebuild everything from scratch, right? Because it's not fully compatible. And uh, again. Value versus versus effort. This is something that uh, I always uh, concern about. Are we talking about replacing it no, or adding on top replacing. just for specific metrics? Yeah, like just adding it on top uh, for some metrics. Uh, not like fully replacing because for like initially I uh, reworded it uh, as uh, replacing, but it's actually was just in the title of the issue, so I replaced this, uh, fixed this. So it's mainly like for supplementing uh, Prometheus. So then I think that what Ruben was suggesting is a good idea, right? So finding out uh, information that we need, and I think the delivery deployment started and completed totally could be an example, and just uh, giving us an overview, right? So uh, in Prometheus, so you described the problem. We want to count deployment by whatever the things you know the problem is. And to say, what we have in Prometheus is this, we can't get this number. And maybe there, someone with more experience like Vladimir can say, indeed, this use case can be done by toggling the metrics and try to figure out if we can. On the other hand, in the same issue, we still say, this can be modeled in click outs this way and showing us the type of uh, query that we can get. And then we continue from there, right? Because it, it's more it's more a focus of the uh, discussion where we can actually understand what is missing and what we will gain we will gain. Also one one more thing like if we're uh, considering this for like a specific metrics, uh, then we introduce kind of edge cases and uh, exceptions right so like we we do everything in prometheus and then those two particular metrics we do in a click house i would better solve the problems in a generic way rather than pinpointing some uh some some edge cases from my point if we want to move to click house for for metrics let's just move <laughs> everything not just specific metrics. I I don't know, but it, it will in, in it will introduce a lot of complexity, I would say, because you always need to think about those edge cases. So 
sounds like we have a few ideas and actions. So let's take that back onto the issue. Um, so we get that all together. But um, yeah, I think that sounds like a, they all sound like, you know, good points. So let's, uh, let's pull that stuff together. So um, Alessio, you have next item. Sure. So I wanted to sort of face this idea with the team and discuss a tiny bit. So there is this um, Rail 7 upgrade that is coming. And in order to the risk and everything, we the, the target date for this is um, 16.2, right? So the idea is that uh, in 16.2, we merge that thing and hope that nothing breaks and we do business as usual. So something that came out uh, during the first um, call, the sync call, was actually the idea of trying to do some kind some sort of experimental deployment those things that we have been discussing in the past that but that are not were not feasible for something like ruby 3 which is a bigger type of change so this merge request seems to have all the necessary characteristics to experiment manually experiment with it because we don't have tooling around that but basically the idea that i wanted to uh, explain here is that uh, we have a single merge request, which is the Rails 7 upgrade that is huge and risky, but does not affect, in theory, database, uh, caching system, or things like that. So it's just it's a pure code change. So what we could do today with the tools that we have is that when we have an auto deploy package, it is possible to create a merge request that goes on the auto deploy branch with the content of the Rails 7 upgrade. If we merge that, we're going to build a new package that is master plus Rails 7. And this package is designed to auto roll back because the next auto deploy package will not have it. And so the idea here is that we can identify a moment of the day where we have less traffic, less things happening and give uh, developers opportunity to run a couple of hours of Rails 7 for, I mean, starting from today, actually, right? Because they say that the work is done. So the idea is that uh, maybe, I mean, I don't want to say when, when is not important. When we think is possible, we just deploy something, we promote something and then say, let's build the package with that change on top. And maybe the first time we stop after canary staging because we don't want to go any further. But the idea is that this will give them uh, package versions that they can query on metrics and things like that that actually exhibit, I mean, it's running Rails 7. So it gives them real data about how the things is performing with QA and everything and without committing to actually merging it into the main branches before the expected uh, due date. How does it sound? And then we can roll back if something goes wrong, right? In we can. 15 minutes. We can, but the most important thing is that it will roll back by itself. That's the, the, the interesting part because we are merging, basically we are putting something that is unmerged on master directly on the auto deploy branch, which is ephemeral by nature, because the next auto deploy branch will be created from master again. So we'll have everything that was in the previous package minus the Rails 7 upgrade. Sounds good. It's kind of like, yeah, minor experimental deployment to expose traffic. Yeah, there is a lot yeah. of manual stuff to do here because we don't have tooling around this. I will not consider spending time on building tooling for this because it's a it's a one-off we want even to we want to know if it's possible right but this is kind of a good candidate when we say maybe we can find some ua ui only type of changes this is bigger than that but it actually shows much more value because in that call in general we had that sensation where everything should be fine but we don't know if it's fine until we start deploying it and the, the way we do deployments today is that things has to be merged on master. So the recovery time in terms of deployment development is much higher because then they will have to revert and everything. Here it's, it's completely different because we give them a package that the package will live for hours, no more. 
and they can gather information and go back. I mean, they're already in development, it's not merged. So the next one is not a concern, right? So if something goes wrong, the next package will not have it. And that it, that helps us validate the solution as well, yeah, it's, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. It's for the risk in validating the solution, increase everyone, um, let's say, uh, confidence in it, because the end goal is that we would like to treat the Rails 7 uh, upgrade as a regular migration, as a regular merge request, right? So if this gave us confidence, then we say, okay, we're done. Let's merge it and we'll be in the next package. I'm just wondering, will it somehow increase the chance of uh, merge conflicts afterwards? No, because we are not merging it. So they are that, that's the, so they are already keeping this. It's a long leaves branch, and they keep it updated and rebased on top of things that are changing. So that's part of the challenge they have. And this is one of the things that say they consider the work done now. We are kind of telling them keep it baking for two months, right? So this type of approach will kind of reinforce uh, uh, our understanding that it's still working, uh, as well as kind of give uh, developers some kind of practical things to work on, right? So they have they can see the metrics, they can see how it behaves, they can make changes and adjustment, and and keep the thing uh, live instead of say let's pause the, oh, this effort for two months and then. We are back on square zero. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering how many commits and changes do we need to apply to auto deploy branch, and this... then and 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 then re replay these changes on uh, on the master branch when we want to roll out. That's like if it's only one commit, then it's like a perfect, right? Yeah, I mean if this is like something. Dozens, that... This is not. This is not the case right now, and it's something we should fix. So they are working iteratively. So right now they have 28 commits, but this is not what we will do, right? So we want them to have a squashed commit that they can pick into the auto deploy branch because they can't pick the merge. Merge never happened, right? So what I'm saying here is that uh, if maintainers that reviewed this work say that this is ready, they think that this should can be merged today, and we as a company decided to postpone this for two months because we don't want to merge RAID 7 with breaking change of 16.0 and things like that. So we are de-risking everything. That's why we are doing this, as well as there are some kind of impact with backporting, right? Because every release will be three times back, and we don't we are not really sure about the impact of backporting something RAID 7, RAID 6 in the middle of uh, also breaking changes from a major release. So if we go to 16.2, we kind of know all the backports are after the major release. And yes, there still will be rail six, rail seven. This will be in any case, right? So because the moment we switch, backports may be affected by the fact that it may not work on, on, um, on previous rails version, but at least we are kind of reducing the number of changes in between. And so, th th this is this is why oh, this is, is taking time. But the, the work seems to be done. So if they say that it's okay to merge, they can create a single commit to put on top of auto deploys, and we just merge it on auto deploy. And another question. Uh, oh, so if we are uh, if we are thinking that to deploy with 16.2 well actually we are not we are we are we're we not gonna uh we're not gonna maintain 15x anymore at that stage right yep okay yeah that's that's a good idea yes it can happen right if something is really uh we had a, um exception in the past for something very big that we backported more but i mean it's specific to some fixes that is really important, then someone will check those fixes in rates seven as well, and before 16.0. Uh, so just in the interest of time, uh, I think generally it sounds like a great proposal, Alessio. Um, if the developer, like development team for or the Rails team also agree, then at that point, can we maybe spend some time with Vladimir and Myra and figure out like, 
you know, practical steps that we want to um, make sure we have in place to, to try and actually see if we can do this. So. Okay, cool. Great. Um, so is there any final stuff anyone wants to bring up on this recording? Nope, uh, stop the recording. <laughs>